Welcome back to Pokemon Moon. We defeated the evil mastermind. That's the end of the game, right? Lusabini, you're under arrest. The EPA sent us here due to the massive amount of hairspray you used to keep that hairstyle up. You've added like 20 years of ozone damage to the thing. See, I don't even think it's really hair. It's just one giant pasta. You've used so just much hairspray, you literally ripped a hole in time and space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this goes beyond ozone. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to enter Wait, the nozone. Wait, she flickering into the... <laughs> yeah. She's getting sent into the Ultra Dimension, basically. I'm gonna send you to another dimension! <laughs> Is this supposed to be her comeuppance? Well, no, that's, no, what, she no. that's what she wanted. That's what she wanted from, the, from yeah. the beginning. As you can tell from her waving, no. <laughs> Wait, Yeah. did he go too? Yeah, he was yeah, worried about her, <laughs> basically. Oh, here comes wow. my best part, the, the best part of the game, where we learn that Lily is secretly the strongest woman on Earth. Okay, Bruno trains for years in order to get his massive ripped muscles, but Lily here can lift Cosmoim, who weighs literally two tons, <laughs> all by herself. Keeps it in her backpack and climbs mountains with it. Okay, sure thing there, Lily. Wait, this 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 little thing weighs it's two a, tons. It's a, it's absurdly dense. Yeah, it's a, it's it's based off a black hole, basically. So it's tiny. Are you but sure it... it's just not? Are you sure it's just not like floating inside the bag? I mean, that's probably what's actually happening, but that's not as fun to joke about. <laughs> yeah, but that's not. Yeah, that's that's boring. Yeah, that's nowhere near as funny. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that uh, Cosmog evolved. I mean, if I if I look up Cosmog. Hi, boobs. On Cerebi here real quick. Hold on. Just a, just a moment. It says that it evolves at level 43. It doesn't say it evolves after undergoing uh, traumatic stress upon the whims of a crazy blonde lady. So I think that they might need to check their sources on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but thou must answer. Yeah. So the answer is find the legendary Pokemon because that'll fix it probably we think which is okay so this is actually i mean it works in this game so i'm not gonna complain about it too much here but that's actually a problem that i've had with a lot of the plot for many of the pokemon games over the past you mean how the legendaries don't factor in at all well essentially it, no they, they do factor in that that's actually the problem that i'm talking about like each plot kind of feels like okay Evil team is doing a thing. Either we have to go and find the ultra. Well, basically, we either have to find the legendary because the evil team is making the legendary mad. Well, so, sorry, sorry. Let me clarify. Legendaries don't really matter to the plot beyond being a means for evil person to take over the world or whatever. Yeah, they're they're MacGuffin, basically. You're right. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that the the like the cover legendary the, the legendaries are important because they're going to be on the cover of the game and they're going to sell copies, obviously. But I was going back when the red, blue, and yellow games were on the virtual console. Um, I was playing through again, and you know, if you go into one of the 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 little houses in between routes. One of them has a telescope, and you just randomly see Articuno flying through uh, in one of them. And you're like, oh, wow, what the heck is that thing? I'm going to go find it and catch it. And I came to realize that the legendary Pokemon lose a lot of their mystique when you when they're always shoved in your place in your face through plot progression, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, yes. I mean there are other, and they do have other legendaries in some of these games that they, they tried that are optional, and you can try to hunt out, but, like, nothing in Red, Blue, and Ye Yellow makes you get Mewtwo, for example. Or even in Gold and Silver, you never have to go to... I, I do love her... You, ne you, never, you never have to encounter any legendary Pokemon in Gen that, 1 or 2. Yeah, that, um, yeah her, Lily. her bad Z Lily, just dance. stop. <laughs> just stop. Yeah. I know we're talking over character development here, but it's... I... If they were going to do... Well, I mean, they are going to do Gen 8. I hope that the legendary Pokemon are completely optional and don't factor into the plot at all. Like, I hope that that's the case, because then they can do more with, like, world building with legendaries, like what they did with, say, Mewtwo in the yeah, Cinnabar it, it Mansion was, um, and things it, like it's, that. It's weird. Uh, Gen 2 was the first one where the rare Pokemon became the title, like, like, like the cover Pokemon. Because it was the starter Pokemon for Gen 1. Uh, Gen 2 put the rares on the cover, but they weren't really plot significant. No. It was well, just... Oh, oh, no. could... sort of slightly... In the world-building no, no. sense, but not plot significant. Yeah. Not plot. plot yeah, yeah you, you just... 
the, which whichever one was on the cover was the one you could get in that game. Well, you can you well, can no, get no, both. Whichever, whichever but... one you had kept, which was, it was the one you encountered first. Yeah, but same first, thing. Yeah, you could get both. Yeah, yeah. you can get both. Yeah. If you talk to a random guy in Peter City, gives you the item you need to get the second one. Like that. I did <laughs> also, the know. levels are swapped between versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ulti- so th- ultimately, the reason they did that for Gen Two is because they knew there was never going to be a, well, not inherently the same kind of third version they were going to do with red, blue, and green. Yeah. So they wanted to have something different. Like, they couldn't just leave out one of the starters. You yeah. Know? I think the first time they did something really, like, like plot-heavy with the legendaries was Crystal version. Yeah, uh, they, where they... Sort of. Like, Suicune yeah. was there, but... Like the mm-hmm. Suicune was also technically optional. Yeah, if you didn't do any of you, the you you events. you you fought you, yeah, you, you well, could like, play East I, what if I mean you is like the... it was the it was the first time they did a story based around the legendaries. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Rather than just having them be these mythical Pokemon that are in the game and you can find them and catch them somewhere. I mean, um, then when then you get to Gen three where Kyogre and Groudon are just straight up shoved in your face and there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that was that was in theory a uh, pretty cool thing just as a one-off thing, but they kept doing that afterward. Yeah, you know, again, <laughs> like, there are instances, like, for example, Black and White 1, or this game in Sun and Moon, where I think it works and it's fine, but those are the ones that, those are, I feel like, the exceptions rather than the rule, because then we've got Diamond and Pearl, Dial- and then... Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina just basically don't mean anything in the context of what's going on, they're just there. And also, you've got Xerneas and Evital who have, like, the worst story... They literally just pop up in the in the enemy base and then you fight them. Yeah, <laughs> because oh, I'm gonna fucking murder everyone on the planet. Okay, because <laughs> Lily looks so weird without her stupid hat. Yeah, I know it. She doesn't. She doesn't like, want to look like a jellyfish. Ever since I ever since I don't have to carry the bag anymore, I feel a, a weight has been lifted. <laughs> well, <laughs> Lily, about that. Uh, we're, we're gonna weigh that thing real quick. Uh, to two tons. Oh, this scale must. Oh, be look at that. The scale's been obliterated. I love how when they did the dramatic close up on the on the town you could see the moment where the Sharpedo <laughs> where the Sharpedo <laughs> popped in. <laughs> yeah. Well that's actually just an old three D S version. It actually stays it actually loads just fine on the new three D S. Oh. <laughs> wow. Every house in this goddamn town is Their the boat bloated, houses. Is the bloated float from Oblivion. <laughs> yeah, basically. So yeah, um uh... <laughs> boat houses. If you don't like the neighbors, you could just float away. <laughs> yeah, speaking of inns from several parts ago, one of my favorite inn hijinks episodes in video game history is the bloated float from Oblivion. Because you go there, you, you stay the night, and then it, it's, it's an inn that's in a boat. So, of course, what happens when you stay the night, the thing gets fucking hijacked. So you wake up to find that pirates have taken over the bloated float and sailed it out to sea. So you have to solve that problem to get back to town. <laughs> and it's like the earliest opportunity the game gives you to get a decent magical weapon too, so... It's lucrative. Do you catch the weird anchor Pokemon, Ryan? No. Aw, oh, I love that There's... one. There's an anchor Pokemon. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's you should have okay, like the the first time it's a kind of rare fishing pole in this town. So it's easy to miss. The first time you're likely to see it is in the Elite Four. And when I actually saw it for the first time, I literally said out loud, What the fuck is that thing? <laughs> Cause it's like it's called Delmar. It's not even a water it's not even a water type, it's a ghost grass. It's ghost grass and its ability effectively gives it steel stab. So it's a good Pokemon. But it's it's bizarre. Birds should not be able to hover by flapping their wings. Just saying. Yeah, hover bird, uh, hovering birds say hello. <laughs> uh, according to all known <laughs> laws of aviation, laws of there's aviation. no reason why a pelipper should be able to fly. <laughs> well, you know, the birds that do hover tend to flap their wings at like a really rapid uh, speed, and they flit around. So they're more like bugs in that sense. But you're not going to hover by languidly flapping your wings like that, I'll just say. Trying to bring physics into Pokemon. You never had wings yourself to test this on. Yeah, but even without wings, he can still fly. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh yeah, this is now. Oh, this man. is like this is where in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon the game really starts to change. Yeah, this town because up until this point, it's almost note for note the same game. Which this is town weird. is literally the Poke Floats. <laughs> you're not. You're not wrong. Can we play Poke Floats? I want to play no, Poke Floats. Nobody likes Poke Floats. I like Poke Floats. I'm surprised they did. <laughs> you know, and though I am still kind of sad I never brought that stage back. <laughs> was it in and Brawl? No. No. Oh, okay. It's not in Brawl or Four. It, it was one of my favorite gimmick stages. Okay, guys, items on Pokey Floats. <laughs> well, yeah, nobody likes Coin Pokey battle. Floats in Melee, but nobody likes anything but Final Destination in Melee. So. No, no, well, Dreamland is now the, the, the starting stage, because it's... No, most... I actually like most of the stages no, in Melee. It's, uh, it's uh, just... It's the only two I really don't like... Oh, sorry, three. Uh, Big Blue, obviously, just because... Basically, the three ones I don't like are the ones where... They move a lot, and therefore kind of makes it really hard to use guys like Bowser or Ganondorf. So wait, Ryan, I'm, I'm, you're saying that your three least favorite stages are probably Brinstar Depths, Pokey Floats, and Big Blue? Actually, no, I'm fine. With, I'm actually fine with Brinstar Depths. Wow. Okay, because at least that's are... not, at least that, at least that's not forcing you to keep uh, up with anything. I was uh, I was more getting it like whenever you hear someone talking about melee nowadays, it's it's always in the competitive sense where all the gimmick stages are worse because they have gimmicks in them at all. So well, no. Eh. It, 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 as far as melee's stages go, most of them are still viable. It's just a matter of they just don't like choosing them. Yeah, because yeah. So they might as well not be viable. Yeah. <laughs> no fun allowed. <laughs> so, yeah, no fun allowed. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's just one of those things where they can use them, so there's nothing really wrong with say, um, like Yoshi's Island, and they still use well, them, obviously. You know, but the the tournament rules are one thing; the attitude the players have is another. Oh yeah, no, no, I, no doubt. A agreed. There, it's just a matter of, you know, Yoshi's story is fine. Yeah, like there's no real you know, reason why I think Fountain of Dreams should be banned. I think other than it causes lag if you use ice climbers on it or something like that. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, Ryan was bringing this up earlier, but uh, in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, this is the point where the game actually does get different plot-wise and gameplay-wise because. Ultimately, aside from the minor additions in each town and, like, the small side quests, the basic strokes of the plot are identical up to this point. Like, you know, you meet some weird cosplay people and have, like, two fights with them, but that's, like, the only change, all, all things considered. Uh, the plot changes kind of start at Aether Paradise, but the gameplay changes don't. Once you get to Pony Island, then you start doing different things, basically, and I'm not a fan of how a lot of them are work because i feel like many of them change the stories in ways that eliminate helpful moments like the way they do executor island for example i'm not a fan of how they do that in ultra sun and ultra moon yeah no it, it's weird it's like ultra sun and ultra moon aside from the minor things we mentioned is almost exactly the same game leading to what's the point yeah but almost everything they change from this moment onward is also kind of a you've made everything worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, oh, oh, I didn't change enough. Okay, I'm going to change more. Oh, no, now you don't like the changes. Oh, oh. Well, no, the, I know, the, I, the I'm making fun is, of myself at yeah, this point, but. Yeah. I, I well, really... no, it, it, it's one of those, changing isn't inherently the problem, it's the fact that the changes were worse. Yeah. It's I the really, quality of the change. You know, I really yeah. think they should have tried for another black and white two kind of approach rather than doing, uh, let's do sun and moon again, only different. I like agree. If it the, like if it like if it weren't for the 3DS being what it is hardware wise, Team Rainbow Rocket could have been just DLC. Yeah, basically. Honestly, it could have just been DLC altogether. Like, there's no. It could. It, it, it could have, but I don't think you want to risk that for the standard 3DS. Yeah, I mean, yeah. DLC does exist on the 3DS, but I don't know if people would want to bite that bullet for the first time. Major DLC is introduced in Pokemon. On the 3DS like, I think game. Like, like, like they may do that for the Switch because it's technically a uh, console. But. I think it can work because I don't. I, oh, I'm not. I don't it's not. Remember a... anybody? I don't remember anybody having problems with Smash. Well, here's the no, thing. It, I'm it, not it, talking about whether or not it will work. I'm talking about whether or not the fan base will accept it. Because you, you are right uh, that people don't mind it for Smash. And but the thing is, is that while the Smash Brothers fan base is also as finicky as the Pokemon fan base can be, it's a different kind of finicky. And fighting game fans are generally used to the idea of DLC at this point. RPG people, it's still kind of... Like, we were talking about Final Fantasy XV earlier. Like, some people are still not happy that so much of that game 
was released as DLC later down the line, you know? Well, part of the reason for that is that in Final Fantasy XV's case, it's ungraceful. Like, there are points in the story where Ignis or Gladiolus or Prompto just sort of exit stage right for a while, and then they come back, and there's this implication that stuff has happened with them, but you never find out about it. Uh, and a lot of their character development is relegated to those off-screen moments. So it feels like at that point you need to take a break from the main game and play the DLC that might not be out yet. Uh, to get the full picture of what's happening with that character and who they are. Yeah. It, that's, that, that's, Creepy it, old lady. <laughs> it, 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 it's, uh, it's ungraceful because it takes you out. It, it feels like it should be there, but it's not. And it takes you out of the experience by segregating itself off on one side. Whereas when that kind of thing would happen in, say, Final Fantasy VI, you, you, your character's paths would split and you play as each of them and possibly in whatever order you wanted depending on the game and what the situation was and you get a full picture of what was happening with everyone the whole time yeah so in the in the case of pokemon like again like rainbow rocket is a kind of segregated side story like it's a post game thing that doesn't happen so it's like it it feels separated even in the game it's included in so making it a five dollar download extra with maybe like a couple yeah, of other the, things um, wouldn't have changed I, that much. I don't think Pokemon would ever would ever uh, feel wrong if it had something like uh, an expansion, like a, a legitimate expansion, the kind you'd get in an, uh, in an Elder Scrolls game where there's uh, new content added rather than no, content I don't, that should I don't have been there. I don't think that's I don't think that's a, I don't think that will be a problem when they get to Switch because the Switch is also a home console and there's sort of that expectation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Whereas a 3DS being a console from 2011, not just from hardware limitations, but, but attitude limitations, it might have. Yeah. But really, the, the point is, um, well, Final Fantasy 15 is a home console game too. The point is, the implementation of the DLC will affect uh, players' opinions of it, especially if the absence of that DLC results in the game feeling incomplete. Now, Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 15 has its development hell cycle. And Lewis is gone. Awesome. Excuse, All right. But... Tune in next time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I'll stop now. <laughs> They give me this strange symbol. What, the, what do they mean with that thing with their neck? Cut what? 